Hello, welcome again to Open Edgeware Learn and Teach. I am Rajiv and this is video 2 of our course series Introduction to Microcontroller Programming. And in this video, we are going to have a look, a peek inside a microcontroller to see what it is made up of and what makes it work. In the earlier video, we learnt how a microcontroller is very similar to a computer. In fact, microcontroller is a small computer which can be used to perform small and dedicated tasks. In this video, we'll be taking a powerful microscope which can look inside a microcontroller and tell us what it is made up of. So let's assume this is your powerful microscope, very powerful microscope, powerful microscope. And uh, we take a microcontroller chip and place it here to see what it is made up of. And if such a powerful microscope existed, what we will see inside is lots and lots of transistors, thousands and thousands of transistors. Now what is a transistor? A transistor is basically a three terminal device which can be used for multiple purposes. It can be used as a switch, it can be used as an amplifier, it can be used as an oscillator and so on. In most integrated circuits and in the microcontroller chip, a transistor is used as a switch. I'll give a brief illustration here to tell you how a transistor is used as a switch. There are many different kinds of transistors and the type of transistor that I'm going to show you here is an NPN bipolar junction transistor. NPN BJT bipolar junction transistor. Uh, this is the first terminal called base, this is collector and this is called the emitter. Now this transistor can be used as a switch we all know how a switch works. Mm, let us draw a switch here as an example. This is your switch. Let's call this P, let's call this C and let's call this E. Uh, let's say the terminal E is connected to a bulb which in turn is connected to a battery. So this is your bulb and this is your battery. Right now the switch is open and so the terminal C and E are not connected. Because of this no current can flow from the battery to the bulb. But when we apply a little pressure on the terminal B the switch gets closed. C and E gets connected and the current can flow from the battery to the bulb. This is how a switch works. We all know this. This transistor, when being used as a switch, is very similar to what we saw here. Let me draw the diagram of a transistor being used as a switch to fully understand this. Uh, let's say this is your transistor. This is the base. This is the collector. And this is your emitter. Let's connect the emitter to a bulb. And let us connect the collector to a 5 volt supply. This is your ground. When this terminal B of the transistor is pulled low, by pulling low we mean connecting it to a low voltage, let's say 0 volt or ground. So when B is pulled low, the terminals C and E are not connected or they are open 
and so no current can flow from the positive 5 volt supply to the bulb and the bulb does not glow. So when B is pulled low C and E terminals are not connected and we say the switch is off. Switch is off. However, when we connect the base terminal of the transistor to a positive 5 volt or when we pull the base high when we pull the base high the C and E terminals get shorted and a current can flow from the positive 5 volt supply to the bulb and the bulb glows we say the switch now is on when B is pulled low the switch is off C and E terminals are open the current cannot flow when base is high when base terminal is pulled high the switch is on the C and E terminals get shorted and the current can flow from the 5 volt supply to the bulb this is how a transistor is used as a switch and I'm sure you can you can uh, see the similarity between this switch between this switch that we saw here and the transistor being used as a switch this is one type of transistor that I explained here being used as a switch this type of transistor is PJT and PN type there are many different kinds of transistors most of them work in more or less similar manner now that we know how transistor is used as a switch let's see how thousands and thousands of transistors in a microcontroller make it at work like a small computer uh, to understand this uh, let's draw an another transistor circuit here being used as a switch uh, let's say this is your transistor uh, this is your collector again this is the emitter let's connect this time it to a small 5 volt buzzer let's ground this this is a buzzer that gives a buzz sound now this is the base of the transistor and let's connect this to a 5 volt supply this is your ground now we know if this base terminal of the transistor is pulled low uh, C and E terminals will be open and the buzzer will be silent if B terminal is pulled high C and E terminals will be shorted and current will flow through this circuit and the buzzer will be on making a buzz sound okay I hope this is clear to everyone on the right side of the screen you are seeing a game of a version of tic-tac-toe that I played with my friend we call this game toe tactic because the rules of the game are opposite to what the rules in tic-tac-toe are so in tic-tac-toe a person who gets three X or three zeros in a row or in a column or diagonally wins in toe tactic the first person to get three X or three zeros in a row column or diagonal loses so uh, this is a game of toe tactic that I played with my friend and uh, my friend lost it because uh, he was obviously new to this game you see there are nine cells in the game of toe tactic which I have numbered here from 0 to 8 and all these cells are filled using zeros and X for time being assume X is high one is also used to digitally represent high and zero is low zero is used to represent digital low now what happens if we connect this base terminal B of a transistor to these nine cells of the game toe tactic in such a way that B is connected to each cell one by one that means B is connected to cell 0 first then cell 1 then cell 2 then cell 3 and so on so B will be pulled low then again low then high then low then high high then high then low then high and it continues again from the top what will happen we know if B is pulled low the buzzer will be silent if B is pulled high the buzzer will be making a buzz sound 
So what happens when it is zero silence, zero silence, high buzz, low silence, high buzz, again buzz, buzz, silence, buzz, so silence, silence, buzz, silence, buzz, 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 silence, buzz. So what we are doing here evidently is we are creating some music using just this one transistor and these nine cells of the game of Totactic. And this is something like a small computer. We can call this the program of this computer because we can change this arrangement of 0 and X to create different kinds of music. And we can call this the hardware that implements the program. Now this is a very very small computer which has just one transistor and it can accept only one bit of instruction. This is this is zero. These are all one bit instructions, zero or one. So this is a very very small computer which can accept only one bit of instruction. Microcontroller is something very similar to what we saw here. Instead of having one transistor, a microcontroller has thousands and thousands of transistors which are combined together. You know, these are thousands and thousands of transistors which are combined together to form a hardware that can perform complex functions. You know, functions like different combinational logic functions and or not NAND and so on. It can also be combined together to form memory which can store data. Transistors can be combined together to perform functions which can keep record of events, which can keep record of time, which can count numbers and so on. So in a microcontroller there are thousands of transistors. A microcontroller is also associated with a program. Now in the illustration that we saw below, the program could only take one bit instruction, either zero or one. Now in a in a microcontroller which has thousands of transistors, depending on the type of microcontroller, a microcontroller can take eight bit instructions or sixteen bit instructions or 32-bit instructions and so on. A typical 8-bit instruction given to a microcontroller will look like something like this x0 xx0. X, I mean this is a this is an 8-bit instruction where x is 1 and o is 0. Okay so this is this is what a microcontroller looks like if we watch it through a powerful microscope that can look inside it it will have thousands of transistors uh, combined together and it will have a memory associated with a program program can be used to give instructions to the microcontroller you can change the program and the microcontroller will perform different functions depending on the program you give I hope this video gives you some idea about what is inside a microcontroller what makes it work we'll be continuing to have a look inside the microcontroller to see what is inside it in our next video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.